back at the life of former Senator Ted Stevens now, who was killed in a plane crash Monday night. The man who once described himself as a, quote, mean, miserable SOB left behind a complex legacy. Once a giant of the Senate, his career was brought down after corruption charges cost him re-election in 2008. Also joining us now is Matt Felling with our affiliate in Anchorage, KTVA. Matt, I just want to start out by saying, is there anything new we need to know this morning that you found out about the plane crash? Any, any other information that wasn't out there last night? Uh, with regards to the crash, they are just getting down to the scene this morning because the, the weather there has been, it's going to continue to be treacherous. The weather is going to be the main contributor to the senator's death, as well as the leading cause as to why the investigation might drag on for a while. Uh, it's hurricane season in the lower 48 on the East Coast, and it's it's coming to be the fall rainy season here in Alaska. I know it's tough to believe it's already hitting fall, but August is known as rainy and very dangerous, but it's also conflicting interests. It's also the peak of silver salmon, which is what the senator was taking advantage of, and it really was a family outing. I was looking at the list of the people on the plane, and three pairs of parents and uh, sons or daughters were on that flight. So. Uh, it was definitely a, a, just a retreat with friends and family. Well, if the information I've read is correct, and I know it's still developing, is it unusual or expected that Stevens, no longer a senator, would be in a corporate-owned plane with uh, kind of high-rolling private industry folks um, and their children? You know, I think we all expected that or knew that was occurring when he was senator, but why now? I guess this is part of uh, how he continued to live even after he left the Senate. Yeah, it's clear that uh, he continued to... Uh, be completely enmeshed in industry and in Alaskan industry in particular because aviation, one of the men was a former chief of NASA and uh, the other person was a GCI telecommunications executive. That's what GCI is. It's basically our Comcast up here or Cox. And uh, he was still uh, networking with these people. They were people that he'd associated with his entire life. They were people that he considered friends. Even when he was at that corruption trial in Washington, D.C., one of the most uh, one of the most difficult things he had to do was realize that this friend of his, this longtime oil tycoon, uh, Allen, uh, had had sort of uh, served him up on a platter to the investigators. I think that he treasured, uh, you know, his old bromide was to heck with politics. Let's do what's right for Alaska. But it's clear that his uh, his habits of just, uh, you know, spending a lot of time with the people who who kept him in office, put him in office, and also. Uh, he, he developed personal attachments with these people, and that's something that uh, went beyond political for him. And yesterday was one of those weird moments that you get every once in a while, where everybody sort of put down their political hatchets. Even the the left, the leftist person in Alaska, just had to drop it and say, "Listen, this guy created this state. Uh, he he was in public service for six decades. We're only 51 years old. So this guy." We all sort of paid attention and paid heed that this guy was a major icon for this state, regardless of how he went out. Uh, Mark Stevens was a powerful appropriator when, when he says that he built the state. He, he brought, mm -hmm. I don't know how many billions, home to Alaska. Um, some people thought it was disproportionate to what Alaska really should have had, but certainly he was very popular at home because of that. What do you see as his legacy um, as now that he's passed? I think, you know, his legacy will, will I mean, there's a generational divide. I think Alaskans who... Um, you know, who are familiar with all the money that he brought to the state. I mean, Alaska is, uh, is um, you know, what they call a net debtor state, and perhaps the most uh, debtor state in the country because of the amount of money per person it gets from the federal uh, government. But that's in part because, again, the way the state is, is, is set up, you have to have an enormous infrastructure that, that the tax base can't support. Um, I think that you know there, there's a number of politicians that come to mind who have had long and storied careers who grew entrenched and again toward the end of their career became fairly uh, comfortable with the trappings of power and that led to abuses of some sort and and they were you know either convicted or charged with certain crimes but I think most people remember them by the physical stuff that they've built the legacy there I think again younger voters probably will have less of a, a, a positive impression of Stevens because they're used to seeing the controversial Stevens, the Stevens who mumbles about a series of tubes on the internet versus the Stevens who worked really, really hard for many, many years trying to make sure that, you know, Alaska received its fair share, if not more, uh, 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 of money from Washington. Matt Felling, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for joining us and, and filling us in on what's going on up there. And we want to add another news item now. 
that, uh, according to a family friend, Associated Press says Democrat Dan Rostenkowski, who served 18 terms in Congress, has died. So I wanted to ask Bob Schieffer, another controversial former member of Congress, uh, you know, uh, was it corruption charges that he was... And another of? former chairman of the House <laughs> Ways and Means Committee, uh, who was literally one of the most powerful people, not just of his era, but of all time in Washington. Again, uh, one of these politicians that... Uh, he was there so long that he came to have, I thought uh, Mark used a very good word, uh, a sort of a sense of entitlement about anything goes. And, and I, I've seen this over and over where, you know, uh, these people come here, uh, they amass all this power, but they don't make very much money. It's all in, you know, the, the trips and all of that that they get. And they come to feel like, look, I'm doing all this for my folks back home. I deserve all of this. And uh, Danny Rostenkowski, one of the uh, <clears throat> most fun, interesting uh, characters uh, to be around. I mean, I covered him a lot was I, I was on Capitol Hill, and it was always fun uh, to cover him, uh, unlike Ted Stevens, who, who pretty much a lot of people agreed with his own assessment of himself, that he was a mean <laughs> SOB. Uh, uh, Danny Rostenkowski was, was a great character. and. Uh, and he was very, very powerful. But in the end, uh, it just kind of <clears throat> like happens to so many of them. He kind of got carried away with himself. Well, CBS News has confirmed uh, his death. And he was indicted in 92, charged with misusing government and campaign funds, lost his bid for re-election in 94, served 17 months in prison, got a pardon from Bill right. Clinton in 2000. Enormously popular within his own party. Another difference with Ted Stevens. The Democrats love Dan Ross and Dan Ross and Towsky. And um, uh, and uh, uh, it, you know, and, and I, again, I, I, I remember, I remember how big a story that was, and I was 14 years old, I think, when when some of the, some of the, some of the the luster began to tarnish. But I remember sitting in my my economics class in high school, and the teacher said, you know, the most powerful person in this country is who has more influence over economic policy than anyone, and president, no. Dan Rostentowski. Well, who's that? We learn. Well, um, uh, you yeah. know, Mark, uh, and the one that he has succeeded, of course, yeah. was Wilbur Mills. Right, Will, Will, who Wilbur wound Mills. Up, who you know, he also was had very a, popular. Well, tried he also, um, and had wound up with the Argentine fountain. firecracker, Fanny right. Fox. Fanny F and Fox. They and drove the, the car off into the. To the uh, there is something about that ways chair, and ways and yes. means, that just, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, there, that's. that's <laughs> that, 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 I didn't really, I remember that now, Wilbur Mills, yeah. <laughs>